Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Cori 24 inch computer monitor. This is the model number 24N1A. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you are interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box and packaging right here with their logo and branding on it. That's about it. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, you can see our product literature right here. We have our quick start guide walking us through stand installation and assembly. Next, you can see we have our full user guide and manual available in multiple languages. Walking you through everything you need to know about the product with a nice introduction, going over all the features, the operating menu, troubleshooting section, wall mount information if you want to do a visa mount this is visa mount compatible 75 by 75 safety instructions regulatory information and then you can see everything repeats itself in multiple languages with their customer service and contact information directly on the back of the guide for you next you can see we have our stand it's in two pieces right here we have our base and we have our arm so to speak then we have a cable management clip as well that will just mount and snap right in place there to route all of our cables in a nice channel. Next, you can see we have our power supply and adapter right here, followed by our HDMI cable. There is one HDMI cable included. Lastly, you can see we have the monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's the monitor up close, check it out. Everything looks great. From the back, you can see we have their logo and branding, our visa mount option, where our stand's gonna be installed, Kensington security lock, more information about the monitor itself, we can flip it up and you can see our ports and IO right here, one HDMI port, one VGA port, and our power plug for our DC barrel connector. You can see all our different menu buttons and controls right here with our power indicator light. Check that out, you can get an idea for how thick this monitor is too. You can see it from its side profile as well and from the top. So you can see nice curved design that gets a little bit wider as it goes down. Flipping it over to the front, you can see our nice screen right here with their logo and branding front and center over menu button icons and a really narrow bezel going all around the sides and the top. And maybe if I hold it up close, you can see that the screen itself is gonna end right where my tip of my thumb nail is, if you can see that right there. So almost an edgeless screen, so to speak. Depend on the angle of light, if you can see that. Maybe look up here, you can see where the screen stops. So we have a slight little tiny bezel on the display itself, but then just this really thin lip of plastic. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand installed. Stand installation, simple and straightforward, no additional tools needed. You're just gonna take the two pieces as shown here, line them up and gently press in place. So there we go, we just got the base installed. If we ever need to remove this or disassemble it for any reason, there's this little black lip right here. Just press that and then you can wiggle this back out to remove it. Now let's take our little cable management piece this is just gonna snap on the back. So just line it up, and press it in place, there we go. And now we're ready to attach this piece. It's gonna slide up right here into place. And we have this open button we can press as needed to remove the stand. If we want to use our own visa mount, we can. So it'll be off camera because I need to have this lip right here, but just make sure that the L piece of this bracket lines up under the plastic so the whole thing can slide in and then just gently press it up in place. It doesn't really give you a snap or click sound, but I can tell with how the button is and I can press that open button that everything has now been installed. So check it out. There you go. You can see we have the monitor fully assembled. Now this stands very basic. There's no height adjustment. There's no swivel rotation or anything like that. We can just tilt it back. You can see our max tilt back and then you can see our max tilt forward. So you really can't tilt it down at all, but you can tilt it back and give it an angle up if you want, but that's going to be it. If you want to rotate it to the left or the right, you're just gonna have to literally move it to the left or to the right. And if you want to increase the height or decrease it, get a different stand or add some books or something along those lines. Now let's go ahead, let's power it on and try it out. So we have the monitor plugged in, powered on and connected to a Windows 10 PC. Let's bring up the built-in on-screen display and menu. You can see all the different options that we have right here. First up, let's go ahead, let's look at the display settings. So you can see we can adjust brightness, contrast, and DCR. Next, let's bring up our language options. You can see all the different languages that are supported. 
Then we have our game mode settings. We can choose to turn overdrive on or off. That's just your preference. We have our different image mode settings. We have our color temperature options right here. So cool, warm, and user. Next, we have our aspect ratio. We can adjust that if we want. Then we have our input options, our other settings right here you can see. So we can power off or adjust gamma. And then lastly, we have our reset options. We can reset the monitor and then we can also exit the menu. Now let's go ahead, let's browse the web. We got YouTube pulled up right here. This is the trending page. So you can get a feel for how everything's gonna be displayed, the clarity. Let's go ahead, let's pull up The Verge. That's a popular online tech news website. Same thing, you can see all different images, fonts, headers, titles, ads, how everything is gonna display and look right here. And just for fun, let's go ahead, let's just click an article to load it up so you guys can see too how it looks. And then lastly, maybe you want to do some online shopping. We got a popular online retailer, Amazon, pulled up right here. And you can see what it looks like if you want to browse the web and do some shopping with this monitor. Now it's time to revisit those color settings within our menu so we can see how it's going to affect and change our image when we play the same video. So let's go ahead, let's go over to it. It's just under the mode setting. And then you can choose different options. So currently we have it in standard. Let's go switch it to movie. Then we'll do FPS, RTS, iSaver. You can see iSaver really tries to eliminate that blue light for you. Let's go back standard, movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. Try to cycle through them quickly again so you can see it for the same scene. So you get the idea there. Now we're back to standard, movie, FPS, RTS, and iSaver. Since we're looking at color, let's go ahead, let's measure the color accuracy. They do claim 99% sRGB, so let's use Display Cal and our data color tool right here and see what we get. All right, so the results are in. You can see we got 98.7% sRGB coverage, so really close to what they advertise as 99%. So we'll give it to them. Maybe they rounded up or they actually achieved that result. You can see for Adobe RGB, we're showing 72.2%. And for DCI P3, we're showing 76.9%. Now we have the UFO test pulled up on the display. Again, 75 Hertz, 1920 by 1080 P for the resolution. And we have three different FPS values for our UFO sputtering across the screen. So you can see a pretty substantial difference when we jump up from 19 to 38, and then from 38 to 75. This just shows you the importance of having a higher refresh rate and higher FPS values will contribute to making your footage much smoother as shown here. Now let's talk about ghosting. So using our lovely UFO test again from Blur Busters Motion Test, we have our sample image that was done with a pursuit camera to the best of our abilities you can see what we're able to capture to give you an idea for the type of ghosting that you will experience with this monitor. Don't worry so much about the focus of the UFO, right? It's about the rest of the image and what you're seeing in regards to the blurring, so to speak, if you want. But look at the backside of the UFO, even some on the front, you can see what we're dealing with here with the image and movement. It's time to use this magical red box right here to measure the input lag on this monitor. Keep in mind, input lag is different from response time. Response time is the amount of time it takes a pixel to change from one color to another, whereas our input lag is the delay between the screen and your commands. So say your keyboard, your mouse, your controller, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead, let's line it up and try it out. You can see the results right here. We're showing right around one millisecond, not bad at all. That's what you would expect for a computer monitor. Really happy with that result. Now it's time to talk about gaming. You can see first up, we have Assassin's Creed on display, over 100 FPS right now. You can see different lighting environments, characters, landscapes. 
get a feel with different movement and motion how everything is gonna look on this monitor. Now we got Forza 5 up on the screen so you can see what it's like if you want a game doing some fast paced driving games like Forza. Different lighting environments, scenes, landscapes, you can see all that, how all the colors are, the graphics too, the movement, the motion. We're at 75 FPS at 75 Hertz. Honestly, it looks better than I thought it would be. I would say it's really fluid and the details look great at 1080p on the smaller screen size. That's fine. I think the graphics look really nice. You can even see like there's the rain and the mist, all the reflections. You get the idea here, all the movement. Not bad. Now we're looking at Borderlands 3 gaming footage. We've got some explosions different lighting environments with the landscape, quick camera pans and movements, different characters. Should see a shootout here in a minute. Fires. More fire. Got some people running, some fast movement there. Here we go, having a little shootout getting ready. There's the firefight. Some explosions. Nice little flashbang there almost. So after using the Cori 24 inch computer monitor, let me share with you my final thoughts. First thing I wanna say is in regards to longevity, I expect this monitor to hold up great. I'm currently using two other Cori monitors right now here in my studios, and I've had zero issues, dead pixels or anything else, and they've been around for almost a year now. So I expect this one to hold up just as well and all of them the last for years to come. In regards to this particular monitor, I did notice the viewing experience is different from those other monitors I reviewed from their gaming lineup. They're all IPS panels, but for some reason, this particular panel gives me some color um, distortion when I'm looking at it from the sides that you typically don't get with IPS panels and I can't see it on the other monitors. So I'm not sure where that leaves us. They say it's an IPS panel. The viewing experience seems more similar to me to a VA panel with some of that slight color uh, distortion. Whereas if you're doing a TN panel, it's like full blown if you're not looking, you know, straight on at it. But overall in regards to colors, I would say the viewing angle is decent, not as good as other IPS panels due to what I just mentioned. Color accuracy appears to be there per what they're advertising, 99% sRGB. We got really, really close to that in our testing. In regards to gaming, it actually looked better than I thought given the ghosting um, sample that you guys saw. I just wasn't sure how it was actually gonna look, you know, in real life when you're gaming on it, but it looks way better than I guess that test would indicate. So rest assured, if you do want to use this for some budget gaming, you could, even though this appears to be more for business customers and enterprise users. With that being said, since that is their market, I do wish they gave a better stand that had height adjustment and swivel rotation. That would be really, really nice, but they do give visa mount on the backside. So you can bring and use your own stand to give you those features and capabilities. Other than that, in the future, I'd love to see USB ports added. And I really think they should have built in speakers to this monitor. I always say I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them.